Good morning, everyone. Day three of school, and I'm still excited. I'm going to read from the book of Ecclesiastes this morning. I'm going to read chapter five, and this is how it goes. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. A dream comes when there are many cares and many words mark the speech of a fool. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. And do not protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, fear God. If you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied, do not be surprised at such things. For one official is eyed by a higher one, and over them both are others higher still. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profits from the fields. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owners except to feast their eyes on them? The sleep of a laborer is sweet, whether they eat little or much. But as for the rich, their abundance permits them no sleep. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owners, a wealth lost through some misfortune, so that when they have children, there is nothing left for them to inherit it. Everyone comes naked from their mother's womb, and as everyone comes, so they depart. They take nothing from their to toil, and they can carry in their hands. This is too grievous an evil. As everyone comes, so they depart, and what do they gain, since they toil for the wind? All their days they eat in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. This is what I have observed to be good, that it is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given them. For this is their lot. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and to be happy in their toil, this is a gift from God. They seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied in gladness, with gladness of heart. And that's Ecclesiastes 5th chapter. And I like what it says about um, prayer and how we are not to be quick with our mouth or hasty in our heart when we utter anything before God. I really like that. I was reading further in my um, book called The Utmost High. It says, to say that prayer changes things is not as close to the truth as saying prayer changes me and that I change things. God has established things so that prayer, on the basis of redemption, changes the way a person looks at things. Prayer is not a matter of changing things externally, but one of working miracles in a person's inner nature. Praise be to God. We thank you for those miracles working in our inner nature. And just to share a really good thought with you today. Yesterday I was talking with my granddaughter, Zia, who's eight. And she's in third grade this year. And I'm really proud of the, the little fella. She's she's such a, a, a loving child. But we were sitting here talking, and, and she was doing more talking, really. I was just trying to listen or act like I was listening. But this I heard for sure. She said, Grand Bernie, what, what is the, the best thing that you ever did? The best thing that's ever happened to you? I said, having children. You know, I, I thought oh, that was a smart answer. And, and, and children... Really are, are the best things that happened to me, having my, my two children. She said, you know what's the best thing ever happened to me? I said, what's that? She said, God being in my life. My jaw dropped. This kid went up to me. I should have thought at first. God is the best thing that ever happened in my life. And thanks to Zell, that's what I'll answer from now on. What about you? What's the best thing that ever happened in your life? Glory be to God. I know it's Him. Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our friend, our brother. Oh, hallelujah, our Master. Isn't it good to know that there's somebody up there saying a good word for us? Because He loves us so much. I am so thankful. 
Thank you, Zealot, for you are one smart little cookie. Uh, you're not going to get no cookie, but you are one smart little cookie. I love y'all, but God loves you most. Have a blessed day. Let the best thing that ever happened to you be Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God.